<laughs> You're, so guys, yesterday's steps were on 38. Today we're starting on 41. Right? Okay, so here we go. 24B notes three variable equations, the substitution method. Okay? Uh, as you can see, it says we're doing pages 41 through 43. So what that's going to end up looking like for this class. Um, so for regular, they have different problems, but here you have two problems. Um, on page 41, that's where we're going to do our steps in our first example. On page 42, that's where we're going to do example two and example three. And then on page 43 is where we're going to do the other two um, problems, okay? So those two problems and the ones that were given to you for, the, for elimination, they were one worksheet. Does that make sense? Yeah. That I split on Canvas and put two assignments. Does that, do y'all get that? Yeah. So each assignment is worth 50 points because together they are, oh my gosh, okay? So that is why it is two problems, but together they are one assignment. Just like two four is split into two parts, I split your assignment into two parts, okay? All right, but this is what we're gonna be doing. So we have page 41, two, four B. Um, steps in example one, 42, example two, and example three. Example two is going to be a word problem. Example three is just another three variable system. And then page 43 is where you'll do your work for your substitution assignment. Okay. So on 41, at the top, you should have glued your, your steps. So your steps are solved with substitution. Okay. The steps are, um, are you want to make sure equations are written in standard form and numbered number your equations? I will stop talking because there are some people who feel like they know more. So I'm gonna stop. Am I good? All right, you're gonna choose the equation that would be the easiest to get a variable alone. So usually with a variable with a coefficient of one. Okay, you want to get the two variables alone. Um, Tyler, it's in the basket, sweetie. The steps are. Um, so then you're going to substitute the expression into the other two equations and simplify to standard form. Our ultimate goal is always to get down to a two-variable system. Okay. The reason why you want to get down to a two-variable system is because you can solve two-variable systems fairly easy, um, either using elimination or substitution for the two variables. Okay. You're going to substitute the two variables back into one of the original equations, or I'm sorry, back into the equation in step two, and you're going to solve for the last variable. Uh, check your solution, set, it, um, set by substituting values in. So if you're like, I'm not sure if I did this right, please check your solution by substituting the values back in. All right, so the first problem I need you to write down. Oh, don't write all that. It didn't erase. All right, so you're gonna write down, we have 2x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative one. We have x plus 5y equals nine. And we have 4z minus 5x equals four. Let's say it one more time, and then we're gonna move on and start solving. 2x plus 3y minus 2z equals negative one. x plus 5y equals nine. And we have 4z minus 5x equals 4. If you have a hard time seeing, remember you always can open the notes on your canvas and follow along. The difference between the notes on your canvas and the ones on the board is that last year this was unit three, and this year this is unit two, and your example two and three are swapped. The only difference. All right, so we're going to start. So part one, is to make sure they're in standard form. Uh, so this will be handy once we get to our next section, but standard form is just making sure it's X, Y, Z. And if something's missing, then you put in zero as a filler. So here I have X plus five Y plus zero Z equals nine. So now every variable is represented. Okay, here, notice here that my Z um, it's actually before my X. So pick, be mindful when you are rewriting, rearranging, using your associative and commutative properties um, that you are keeping the sign with the number. So it's negative five X 
plus zero y plus four z equals four. And that's my equation number three. Sometimes having it is necessary, sometimes it is not necessary, but I just wanna make sure that you understand that if you are missing a variable, the placeholder is zero, okay? Step number two says that we're gonna choose a variable, number two, because we're gonna choose an equation that would be the easiest to isolate the variable. So looking at our option, which equation has the variable that's easiest to isolate? Equation number two. Equation number two is the easiest because if you look at X, it has a coefficient of one. So we're gonna use equation number two, which is X plus five Y equals nine. What do I need to do to isolate X? Subtract, I need to subtract five Y from both sides. So we're left with X equals nine minus five Y. That is step two. Questions about selecting and isolating. Okay. Step three is then you're gonna take that value, that new value, and you're gonna substitute it into the other two equations. So we're gonna substitute into equation number one. So number one, where there is an X, it's gonna become nine minus five Y. So we have two times, nine minus five y, because that used to be an x, plus three y, plus three y, minus two z, equals negative one. Remember when you substitute in, you distribute and combine like terms. So I'm gonna distribute two, times nine is 18, two times negative five is negative 10 Y plus three Y minus two Z equals negative one. Okay, you're gonna combine like terms. The like term for 18 is on the other side of the equal side. So in order to move it, I have to make it a negative 18. So I'm left with negative 10y and 3y make negative 7y. And then I have negative 2z equals negative 19. So that's my first two variable equation. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing that I did with number one for number three. So equation number three, where there is an X, I'm plugging in nine minus five Y. So I have negative five times nine minus five Y. Do I really have to write zero Y? I can if you want me to. There you go. Plus four Z equals four. So I substitute it in for X. Now I'm gonna distribute and combine like terms. So we have negative 45, a negative times a negative is a positive, positive 25y. Again, you're gonna combine like terms. And in order to combine negative 45 with this like term, I have to move it. What do I need to do to move it? I'm gonna add 45. So we're left with 25y plus 4z equals 49. And that's our second two variable equation. Questions about step three. Okay. You're good. All right, step four is we're gonna solve our, our two variable equation and you have to decide how you wanna solve. So looking at negative seven Y minus two Z equals negative 19 and 25 Y plus four Z equals 49. How do you think we should solve? Elimination or substitution? 
Elimination should be your answer. Unless you're really good at fractions, I would say elimination. Okay, so we have, um, we have negative seven Y minus two Z equals negative 19. And we have 25 Y plus four Z equals 49. In order to eliminate, they need to have a variable with the same but opposite coefficient, right? So Zs are almost there. What do I need to do to the first equation in order to make it work? Multiply every term by two. So this becomes negative 14Y. This becomes negative 4Z. And this becomes negative 38. You understand? And now when I combine them, negative 14y and 25y make 11y. Negative 4z and positive 4z are going to cancel. Negative 38 and 49 make 49 minus 38 is 11. 49 minus 38 is 11. So what does that mean y equals one? That means y equals one. Okay, so now that you know what y is, you can choose either one of these equations to substitute y in and solve for z. Does it really matter which one? I always go with one with the smaller number. So I'm going to substitute y into here and solve for z. So I have negative 7 times 1 minus 2 times z equals negative 19. So negative 7 minus 2z. We're going to have to add 7 and then divide by negative 2. So what is that math? What's negative 19 plus seven? Neg negative 12 and negative 12 divided by negative two is six. We were getting there. Someone was gonna ask why you said that. So I had to lead us to that path. So we now have Y and Z. So that completes step four. And then step five is we take what we got and we plug it back into step number two. So at number two, we had X equals nine minus five Y. So X equals nine minus five times one. And what is that? Four. So our solution, our ordered triple is four, one, This works way better if you have vertical paper. Like vertical? I mean, like if you're going down, but I, I can't go down. I have to make sure to go side to side. And because most of you mimic what I put up here and don't care if you understand it, you just follow the direction I write. Find your way, make it comfortable for you guys. Make sure you're understanding what you're writing down. So what are your questions over? Problem. Nope. All right, we're gonna do a word problem. Okay, so we have, you manage a clothing store and budget $6,000 re to restock 200 shirts. You can buy two shirts for $12 each, polo shirts for $24 each, and rugby shirt for $36 each. If you want to have twice as many rugby shirts as polo shirts, how many of each type of shirt should you buy? Okay, so step one is to write our system. But in order to do that, we have to establish some variables. So what are we gonna let X be? T-shirts. Y is gonna be polo shirts. And Z is gonna be our rugby shirts. Okay, 
So starting off with the first thing I know, my budget, I have $6,000, right? So $6,000 is gonna be spent on what? How is that gonna be calculated? So I have $6,000 to budget. How is that gonna be calculated? Guys, when you're when you're buying something, how do they ring it up? Yeah, how do they what is the machine doing as it rings it up? It adds. And what is repeated addition call? It's called multiplication, right? So for 6,000, something's going to be repeatedly added, right? So there's going to be something that's being multiplied. What am I multiplying here? 12. 12 what? 12 times X, because each shirt is going to cost $12. And what else am I buying? I'm buying polos. And I'm buying rugby. Why did it take that? That was your thing. Like... I was a little concerned there. All right, then you have 200 shirts in total. So 200 is gonna equal what? There we go. X plus Y plus Z, right? Because that's the number of shirts, not the price of the shirts, but the quantity of shirts, right? All right, so the last thing it tells me is if you wanna have twice as many rugby shirts as polo shirts, so I know that I want rugby shirts to be what? Twice as many means what? Two times, two times what? Two times what? Why? Because it said polo shirts, right? So I want my, my rugby shirts to be twice as much, twice as many as my polo shirts. Here is my system. My system is written. Step one is done, okay? Step two is to decide which one of these equations would be easy to substitute value in for. Anyone wants to take a stab at it? The third one, because it's already by itself, right? It says Z equals two Y. So it kind of sets itself up for substitution, right? All right, so then step three, we're going to substitute Z wherever there's, there's a Z, we're gonna turn it into what? Two y. To two Y. So we have 6,000 equals 12 X plus 24 Y plus 36 times two Y. Gonna clean this up. So we get this equals 12 X plus 24y plus 72y, agree? Combine like terms and we get 96y. So we have 6,000 equals that. When you have large numbers, you wanna see if there's a common factor that can reduce this. So you're not working with large numbers the entire way through. The common factor would be 12, good job. I would divide every number by 12. So I'm working with X plus eight equals 500. So that is my two variable system. Okay, that's the first part of three. The second part for three, I need two two-variable equations. How am I going to find the second one? I'm going to substitute it into the second equation, right? So my second equation is 200 equals x plus y, but instead of z, it is 2y. I'm going to combine like terms. And when I combine like terms, I'm left with 
x plus 3y equals 200. So there's my second variable, second two variable equation. What are your questions for step three? We substitute it, we distribute, combine like terms, simplify. Yes? All right, so step four is to decide what is the best method to solve for these two variables? Elimination. So with elimination, we have X plus eight Y equals 500. And we have X plus three Y equals 200. What do I need to do in order to eliminate a variable? Multiply by negative one. Does it matter which one I multiply by negative one? No, it does not. I'm just gonna multiply the bottom though. So that's cool with you. Multiplying by negative one is gonna do what to every sign? Make it negative. So I have now negative X, negative three Y and negative 200. Now, what happens to my X's? It cancels. What's eight and negative three Y? What's 500 and negative 200? So Y equals 60. So now we know why. So now that we know why, we can use either one of these equations to solve for X, right? I'm gonna use the one with the smaller numbers. So X plus three times 60 equals 200. X plus 180 equals 200. What is X? X has to be 20. Step five says to go back to step number two and substitute in. So step number two, we have Z equals two Y. Well, we know what Y is, right? What is Y? 60. So Z equals two times 60. So Z equals 120. Huh? It is not. What, is, what do our variables represent? The shirts, the type of shirts, right? So this, this right here, you have to tell me what they are. So. 20 is not just 20, it's 20 what? So there's, so I'm ordering 20 t-shirts. Y equals what? Polos. So I'm ordering 60 polos. And Z equals what? Rugby shirts. And I'm ordering 120 rugby shirts. We must live in Northeast America or in Britain. I don't know why we'd be ordering that many rugby shirts. Why wouldn't you wear a rugby shirt here? I don't know why we would be ordering that many. I mean, there are, but I don't think we'll be. All right, I would like for you to write down example three. And the elimination. Uh, 